What up, hackers? My name is Clever Chubb. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a keylogger for ethical hacking. That's it. So we're here. We have the tutorial overview. This tutorial overview is just going to tell you a little bit of the project, what we're going to be building, uh, how we're going to achieve that. And here we're going to be streaming. This is our tutorial streaming time. So it's going to be every Saturday. And here we have the curriculum. First on session one, we're going to set up our environment, make sure we have all the tools that we need for this daily application. Session two, we're going to write down, design the features of the keylogger that we want to add, like communicating is like setting back the the key to your server or emailing the key to you, how we get the key, and stuff like that. And Session three, we talk about the APIs that we're going to be using for the project. I don't think we're going to use anything besides the pure Java APIs. And no third party, I hope so. So we don't have any dependency to worry about. And session four, we're going to do the whole application and make sure that everything works. Session five, we write unit tests. So basically, this application is just going to lead you through uh, the way people develop software. So that's what I'm hoping to achieve here. So I'll see you here on Saturday. So stay tuned. Enjoy the show. Thanks. All right. <clears throat> so welcome to session one of the stream. To make uh to make your key logger. So today we're going to just get our development kit. I shouldn't have left that. Uh, let me just go back there. <clears throat> what I need. So pet our uh, curriculum. Today we're going to set up the environment and make sure we have everything we need. So before we start doing anything, we have to go to oracle.com. Uh, I'm going to provide the link after the stream. So when you come over here, I'm using a Windows machine, so I'm going to go for Windows machine. But before you go, before you click download, you have to accept the license. Then you select your OS. If you have a uh, Linux with ARM, have ARM chip, um, Linux x86 chip. 6.4 or you have a Mac OS, whichever one you have, go ahead and download the SDK for that one. I'll say you download the the top one is fine. So you go ahead and download that one or you can download this, uh, the second one, that's fine. So once you have your um, SDK downloaded, you go to Google, then you search Eclipse. Once you do that, then you click the third link, which is this one. So there are okay, two, three, the fourth link, this one. This is going to take you to this website. So right here on this website, you have the server. I fingerprinted my OS. I figured out my OS is Windows. But when you visit that link, you should uh, fingerprint your OS and just select the right one for you. But if it, if it didn't do that, then you can just click here, the drop down menu, and select your OS. <clears throat> Once you do that, you pick the your chip, if you have a 64 bit or uh, 32 bit, then you go ahead and click that, and that will download the installer. So once you have that ready, then you're good to go. So, so you click here, download your Eclipse. And once you have that, then you're ready to go. You can launch it. I don't want, this video is basically going to, uh, this session is going to be really short. So there won't be a lot here. So it's basically go get your 
software development page for Java, you go to oracle.com, go to downloads, and then you either get this one or you get the top one. But you have to accept the license before you can download anything. Then once you do that, you can Google um, Eclipse. So you go ahead and Google Eclipse and you choose the fault link which is this one and that is going to take you to this page where you can select your OS if that hasn't already been selected for you. I'm on Windows so select Windows. I have a 64 bit uh, chip so I select this for to click download but I already have um, Eclipse installed so I don't, I don't have to do that anymore. So once you have all that done, then you can launch your Eclipse. Hopefully you know what Eclipse look like. If you don't, I'm just going to launch mine so I can show you around. So the when you launch, when, the first time you launch Eclipse, it's going to ask you for the workspace you want to use. Um, I'm going to use the default one that Eclipse selected, but you can change that if you want, use something else, but whatever you have, uh, just know that where you, where you have it so that you can be able to look at that if you want to like use another software to um, edit your code. I'm going to cancel and launch it again. So you can just add the workspace you want here, then you click launch. And you can also slide the default so that it launches into that workspace each time you launch Eclipse. So this is going to do some little setup stuff before it launches. This is like the latest Eclipse. So when you download get this one. So I already have the same name in it, but so when you first launch Eclipse, this is what it's going to look like. But you're going to have the welcome page up when you launch it. So how you create your project is you go here, Java project. Don't do this one. I really don't know what this one does for you. So you do project and so this I'll um. I'm going to wrap up session one right here. So session one is basically set up your environment. That's basically it. We did that. Then session two, we're going to create the project and do everything else. So I know it's a really short video, but in order to keep it to what I want, I'm going to keep it short. So this is for session one. So hopefully you enjoy it. And I will be back here for a session two. Hope to see you guys later. Take it easy. Bye. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this session, session two of the ethical keylogger or keylogger for ethical hacking. So today we're going to be um, discussing, let's see here. We're going to discuss the requirement of this um, application and just all the features we want to put into it. As I mentioned before, we're going to be using Java for the whole development. So for now, we're just going to head over to draw.io or draw.io and we're just going to design the classes. So I already have something, but the way to get here is just to go to, oh actually you don't need to do this because I'm going to provide you the file anyway, so you should just watch. So we're going to have a class name which is going to be the keylogger itself. And that will be the class name. Then for the field type or the fields in this keylogger. We're just going to have a simple field object, which is going to be the object that we're going to be using for 
um, send in the key logs that we get. So you just want to get a key log and pass it to that object. That object is going to choose plus as the whole thing and just make sure um, the whole thing is being like logged properly. So we're just going to have a log object. So fill this log of type log. So this is going to be the this class log. So this class is basically not going to have any field. It's only going to have methods. So. We're just going to have only methods in here. And uh, one of the methods is going to. It's not going to return anything but void. Then. And the name of this method is going to be log. So the purpose of the log method, the design is basically to take the log key from the key logger then process that and write that to file so we're just going to be taking the logs put it into this object this object is going to check if the current key that was pressed is a new line or a space character just try to like log each thing so that you have a word instead of having a bunch of keys that doesn't like make any sense so that's the function there. So now we just have only one method right there for that then. So so this one we can only have one field for now for the key logger. Then for the method. So all the methods for the key log are just going to be event based so it's not something that we just call it's going to be something that's going to be like basically handle an event when something happens so basically when someone uh, types on the keyboard like I'm doing right now um, that event gets called so the event we're going to be listening for So the method type for this one, this one is still going to return void because it's just a, a listener. <clears throat> and this will be key, key event listener. Uh, maybe that's not very specific. So this be like more like key pressed I should just take this out so it's a void and it's key pressed <clears throat> event listener so this is going to be a method uh, what it takes in parameter I do not know for now because it's going to depend on the API that we're going to be using for that. Also, we can register for key release. Um, they're all going to return void for now. So let's use an ellipse there. Um, So this will be void. We can start listening for key uh, release event listener. Um,
so this is the two methods so I'm going to be using um I'll just add one more so if you press theories okay so let's leave that leave this as tag that so these are the two classes that we're going to need for I think there are a couple of more methods because the interface that we're going to use for this class is going to require us to implement I think there's about three methods that we're going to implement for that but the log class for now I don't see the log class having more than one method because the method is just to like process the key that's going to be logged so this is the structure for the key logger so we listen for the event when the key is pressed and when the key is released so we just kind of like match up the two keys just to make sure everything match then we can go ahead and log the um okay in that case i think <clears throat> we can go ahead and add a field to this one um how do you do that So we can actually instead of that we can add two fields that are going to be of type string string and this will be current key so we just keep track of the keys and this one will be the previous key. So what we're just going to do here is when so when we call when this event is called, we're going to pass on the current key. Then when this is released, then we use the current key. We we'll pass in the current key again, but then we we'll compare that against the previous one make sure they're the same they're basically going to be the same anyways but just to add some redundancy check in it so this is the structure of that so with that done we can go ahead and um, start the eclipse if you already have your eclipse installed you can go ahead and start your eclipse right now so you load it up now when it pops up, it's going to give you your default workspace. You can change that by doing browse. And you can browse through your directory and select which one you want. But I'm going to use the default one. You can select this. Uh, use this as the default and do not ask again so that each time it launches, it's just, it's just going to launch directly into the workspace. I'm just going to select that. And I'll click launch. Alright, so now we're into the in the workspace. So once we're in there, hopefully it does sound. Oh, let's, let's see here. Just want to make sure that the sound is coming out good. So, okay, that sounds, I guess it's not streaming for some reason, hopefully you guys can see me. Alright, so once you do that, then you go ahead and do new, or do new project. Files new, okay. Yeah, in Java project, so I'm going to call this keylogger. Um, 
You know what I mean? I already have one, so it's kind of like we can just call you a steel other though. That's fine. Then we do the finish. So once you do that, you're gonna have that here. So what I want you to go ahead and do is you create a package, new package. Uh, key logger. Then you finish. Then one more thing you need to do is there's a link on the project page down here. You need to get this uh, library. I think it's available for 30 days, but I'm going to add that to the project file. When I have that ready, so we're going to need this library for the whole development. So you need to download it. So I already have that downloaded, so I'm going to create a folder right here. New folder. I'm just going to call it Ribs. Let me see. Uh, Delete that. Go up there, do a new folder. We'll use, so that'll be where you go to the right library. Then, <clears throat> once we do that, I already have the J and N group downloaded, so I'm just gonna add that. Add it right here. I'm gonna do copy that. And I'm going to paste it in there. Alright, so we have that. Now we're going to go ahead and create our class that we already have it designed in build.io. So we can go ahead and start with the log class. So I'm going to do a new class, give a name, maybe we call it logger. So we don't have any issue with that one packages. So, so now in here we're going to uh, write the two strings that we need. Um, this will be the current key. Current key variable, then we have the uh, previous key. Variable. Um, I don't think we need to make these uh, private because we're just going to be accessing them directly. So that's about that. Then we need to provide the. Uh, actually, maybe I should make it a static class, but if the top level class is really kind of static. Um, let's look def now. So we do country dot public uh, void. Um, maybe it should be void. We should make it a boolean. So we make sure that it doesn't log. So this is going to be a boolean. So if it logged then we get true, if it didn't log then we need to try again. So we need to return a boolean variable on each other method is log. And in there we're going to pass in a string uh, key. So once we get the key, so now we just return false. That's a loop. So when we get the key, we need to do a couple of stuff. So we need to make sure the key is uh, like, we need to like, if the key is a space character, then we know we have already got a word of the logs. 
this because so we need to add a space. Uh, if the key is a space, so we need to add a space in between the world file. Then, if the key is the new one, which is enter, if the key code is enter, then we need to add a new line. So, we need to like figure the out. So, um, maybe I shouldn't be using key actually. Uh, maybe I should use the. Give me one sec, let me check this. So there's an API for this, so I'm going to be using that API. Uh, Alright, let's see here. So give me one sec. So this is the API that we're using for this, and uh, so there. Hmm. Let's see here. We're going to be using the key key event, and we're going to be using so. That's the event we're going to be taking in. So, so we're going to get that event instead of getting a string of a uh, key string. And control here. Here I got. Uh, have an import so we need to import the, uh, the project so let's use the that'll be from the Come on. Waves dot. No. Okay, I think. Well, let's go ahead and add that to the build pad because it's not in the build pad right now. So we need to do this. Uh, let's see. Build pad, we need to configure the build pad so that the, this node we have the pen in there. So we need to. So, how you add the lib to the build pad is you go to you go to your project, you right click, how you configure the build pad, then you do add JL files and go to your lib. And you select that one and you do OK. Uh, do apply and close. Okay, so that should be fine now. So, once we have that, uh, actually, let's keep the string. That will, mm, no. Let's leave it the key. So when we get the key, we then have to like make the check. So, but before that, we need to open a stream. In that case, we need a stream uh, file stream variable here. So we do a file, I think file output stream. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to have a constructor that takes in a file part of the model. 
Now we're going to be logging this locally. We're not going to be transmitting the whole thing across the wire. But that's what we're going to do after we have the whole thing figured out. So this is going to take the string, which is a path. Now, if you happen to um, if you try to use this, well, you have to figure out how to where to install the key logger and where the key uh, the log file is going to be. Then you write your log file to uh, write your uh, write your logs to that file. Then maybe a certain interval you put to your server, but I'm not going to show you that because that's illegal. I'm just going to show you how to put the whole thing in your um, output string. Okay. Um, so this is going to require us to do so I'm not going to try to do that here because I have to do the check. So what we're going to do is just recreate another field, uh, call it path, that we're going to set the path to the constructor. And don't forget to put the base on it. Then in here we create the we we'll create a file alpha stream. No. Um so we need to wrap that with try catch just as well. Or maybe we share the truth declaration so that we just mm, let's handle that here. And we're also going to use finally so that we are also close the string. Even if the whole thing crashes, um, that means we're, we're going to do that. We need to declare this above, then initialize it right here. Then we can do now dot close. Oh, we have, a, we have to do that again. Mm. Alright, so I think we have an issue here with the So we have the final final exception. If we catch that exception we have to handle it. But I guess if the file is not found, then the stream is not going to be open, so we don't have to close it. <clears throat> but if the stream is open, then we have to close it afterwards. So what we're going to do now is then is declare this outside. Then we can have um a method boy closure doesn't take anything it just does out dot close then we can wrap the try catch check here okay so we can do that right there. Uh, we just call that in here.
Alright. So. Once we're able to do that, then we're going to do our check. We're going to do two things. Uh, if we dot we get to the ID can make equals equal equal uh, v virtual key then, then uh, let's check the then again uh, v to make Alright, so we, we make it to the event dot the on the call. Mm -hmm. Key tab to be pressed, field show left. Uh, virtual one, virtual four. And we can. <coughs> And, uh, and test so that means we have a new line so we can do out dot um right let's see which one will be mm, that okay <coughs> So we can do this, then we can also do, so we need to get the child character from that, so we do, um, make to key event dot get key text, so we're going to do we uh, get key code. So now when we do that, we have to go. We have to do get back on the string. And that's also true in exceptions. Okay. So what we're going to do here then I'm not trying to do another try catch but let's see um maybe we can do a private method um this is going to be boolean <coughs> uh, maybe like and it's going to take a byte by array data um so we return false what we're going to do here and so that we're going to copy that out <coughs> um, the whole thing though this should still say there because that will be the check so we're going to copy that out and we are going to change that to data then we add a try catch there <coughs> so and if we do that in start trace uh, that will still return false anyways so if we write successfully uh, we're returning true. Mm. Alright. 
If this if this is successful, we can choose now where it can falls. So that's the game plan there. Then right here, what is it going to call right? Then oh okay. Uh, okay. Don't do that. So we do. Let me choose two events. Start get text and pass in two code. Oh. Yeah. We get the bikes. <clears throat> Alright, um this is I don't think this is very very clean. So how about the business is well do that right there. Then I'm going to do a byte array of data I think we call that so we have a clean code <clears throat> so I'll get that alright so now Then, actually, I guess, since we're just going to be writing, um, wait, <clears throat> we, we're going to test this out so we make sure that the, that the test that we get when we do get bite is actually a new line called I don't really think it is so we can test that out and see what we get and let's see okay <clears throat> so this is just to work enter then let me see it else if let's do the else if Backspace, so, so if someone backspaces, I uh, will already logged what they what they typed in. This will have to be that we have to go back <clears throat> and read the whole. Um, well, I wouldn't want to do that, so we're just going to write backspace into the. So, uh, I think I'm trying to make this yes. Alright, so let's just not add um let's not add a check to all of this. Then what can we do? We get the key, we read that file. That's it. So that's basically what it's going to do. So get the key we read that file and we're going to deconstruct um well what is that <clears throat> so we're going to deconstruct whether the how the data is going to look like after we log it then we can see if we want to like Clean the data up a little bit to make it look a little bit nicer. Okay, so this is for so this is for the log class. Um, 
Then we have to change that to what that. Uh, show a logger. So that is a logger class. So that's for the key logger to um to use. So we can test it out if we want to. So <clears throat> let's create a test for that and test out the logger class. New <clears throat> okay, so what we want to do here, we are going to call, we're going to create the logger class, a uh, logger object. And let's see, I think I'm going to pass, uh, I'm going to pass, um, users, uh, my my downloads. <coughs> Then oh dot txt. So that's a part that I'm doing on the machine. Oh, wait, let's try a different one. Try. Logger, logger. It was new. So I have that then <clears throat> I'm going to call logger dot log then I'm going to pass a YouTube key event then I'm going to pass in ZK how about we do enter? So we see. <clears throat> okay, this will be user key. Uh, Now oh, wait a second. Hmm, this is okay. Hmm, what kind of event do we want to generate for this? So. I assume that we're not going to be able to just test this by having to make the keylogger actually. So let's go ahead and create a keylogger. We'll leave that. Don't make a new class. And this will be the keylogger itself. Um, this is going to implement implement indexes key event listener I believe okay let's 
go back here. Let's go here. So it's native to your listener. Hmm. We're going to import that. Once we do, we're going to implement the methods. <coughs> so we have three methods to implement. So we have the um, native key. We have the native key press, native key release, native key types. So let's go ahead and implement this one. So what we're going to do here, we're going to have our private, private logger. We're going to go to public, public, um, Now for this one, don't forget to name your variable. And when we do that, we're going to need initialize log that equals new log. Bam. And provide attacks. Now, <clears throat> for all intents and purposes, if you are trying to use this in any way, you have to like get the path by yourself. You have to use other, um, other technique to like get the path where you want to place the log file but for me I'm just going to be placing that in my downloads folder so I'm making it static so <clears throat> Alright, so we have that, then right in here, when we do that, we can just do um, log at dot, no, maybe we can plug the right one, get it, log at, <coughs> log at dot, log plus an actual <coughs> that is that so we can do the same thing here same thing there okay now I'll go back to the logger we just want to make sure we're logging the same um the same data twice so we're going to use the previous and current keys so um I'm going to copy that uh, time to for your current keys that get back can we do 
current key, we're going to record that. And so we're going to go ahead and do a check. Hmm. Case current key dot equals the first is no here is previous key hmm. <clears throat> so if they are the same, we skip. So an empty statement there. Else, we just write it. And <clears throat> in that case, that's what we know. No importance of having a return there. We just return true. <clears throat> Okay. Is that equal return true or is that not equal to write it? So you know we're returning true for the whole thing. So I'm just guessing so we don't need the else so we just take that out. If they're not equal, we write the thing. Then we return true each time. <clears throat> All right. Then actually, before we return true, we can do previous key. equals current key so <clears throat> so we reset that this is basically because of the fact that we're calling the same method in all these events so we just we're trying to make sure we don't have a redundant data we just have you need data each time. Alright. So basically this is all we need to implement the key logger. So we have that listening. Blah blah blah. <clears throat> so that's your key logger class right there. Pretty simple right? So. Now we have to write a driver. A driver class for this whole thing. So we need a D class, we call it key, key logger driver. So this is more like a test. Then we have the main, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> um, I'm going to use a sub that this guy has. So D, we just copy this. And we have here. Um, just so you know, we're not using the same version as that, so we're going to have to do get instance here. And we're going to do the import. And this is going to be um, new key. 
reload it. And no idea there. Uh, reload it again. Um, oh, no, I do not see it there on its own package. Power pad, power brick. Mm. <clears throat> I got a power with that. New queue, oh, that's, oh, maybe the, that's the one. Okay, we need to be careful with your cases. So basically, this is all we need. So this is the driver, and oh, let's go ahead and test the whole thing. I'm going to run the application. Alright, it is running. <coughs> so let's see if it loves. If I run Jokun World, then I'm going to go ahead and type in uh, hey man, what is up? <clears throat> okay, it didn't crash, nothing happened, so let's see if we have the logs. So we have the logs here, and we logged enter. So, <clears throat> it didn't log the other. Um, the other text. So, uh, let's see. Mm. Let's go back here. <coughs> um. I should go and stop it. Um, so let's do if if we log successfully. Let's just notify ourselves that we log something. Uh, the create line. success. Now, now we should just type it in. System dot uh, dot terminate. Oh. Fail. <clears throat> oh, yeah, same thing. Everywhere. And we'll just leave it for that one. I'll um, go ahead and try again, see what happens. And I'm going to backspace, it should run the backspace, and I'm going to do was up, guys. So you should log everything that I just did. <clears throat> mm, 
these guys. Now we had four successes. I typed more than four characters, but still. Yeah, it's dead at teach. So it's not log in the right key. So that's a problem. Uh, let's go back to the API right here. Uh, okay. Updates the window. So we're using the same calls. Get text. So. <clears throat> Um, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> and the get text, get key code, get a byte. Yeah, let's just try something. How about we just do this? Um, run this. Well, let's just try that. Um, see if that changes anything. No, not really that one. Alright, let's try again. Hello, everyone. Let's see if we actually log back. Uh, that does not seem right. Oh, oh, we have an error. Oh. I mean, I will run the wrong thing anyway, so we'll run this one. Can I run there in there? Try again. Oh, I'm gonna try it right here. Well, come. <coughs> so I think it fails. So there's a problem somewhere in the code. So you're only logging one thing. Oh, never mind, guys. So we have to append to the file instead of overwrite the file okay let's go ahead and stop that All right, so the issue here is that we open a new file each time and we overwrite the file each time. So we have to somehow open to append. Um, 
So let's see. Is there something? Available as well. Yes. Not for suffering, yes. Oh, I'll put. Screen. Uh, this means something. There we go. I have a couple of stuff still running. I need the whole thing. Uh, I'll put stream. Um, okay, so I need to check the delete. Yeah, I saw this. So, control out. So, let's check the API of our output stream to see how we open a file to append instead of overwrite. So, I see here in the append. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we just put a boolean and say true. That easy. Alright. So once we do that, let's go ahead and try again. I will hold the button right now. So we do it there again. Now let's go ahead and try that one more time. Go back to the driver. Now we do run. Oh, why do I have to select that? Oh, why? Okay. So we run it. Uh, it's running right now. So let's go ahead and type what's up. Okay. Everybody, so it's, we have success, it's logging the whole thing. Let's go ahead and check the log and see if we're actually logged the right stuff. Alright, <clears throat> so we have shift, shift on the find spaces. Alright, so this doesn't make any sense. So what's wrong here? I don't know if that makes sense, if any. Alright, so I will end the stream right here. So tomorrow we'll go ahead and fix the bug and see why we are not logging the actual keys instead we're logging some gibberish data points or data so i'll end the stream right here next week right here we'll continue from where we left off but to recap we have the key logger class which is basically going to be called when stuff happens so we have three, we were, we were using an API from J, Genitive Hook. So we have to implement this key listener, a native key listener. And the native key listener provides three methods that we have to implement. <coughs> um, so we implement, implemented those three methods. We have to use a, an object to log the the key. So the object is this object right here, which has which has basically three uh four fields, the current key and the uh,
previous ski. Um, they don't really have any great tokers right now. We have the path, which is a path to run the data ads. Then we have the file output stream that is going to be used to open up the file. Or if the file does not exist, we create one. Then we just have this method so we can close the output stream. Now we have the write, which is just to write the byte, the data byte. Then we have the logs, which is going to get the test from the key code and then go ahead and call right to log the the key so that's what we have for today so tomorrow we um not tomorrow next week we're going to continue from here uh also next week we might we might do the one of uploading the file after we create the whole thing but so for today we we're going to stop here. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. And I will see you guys back here next week. Bye bye. To the part that we need to log in all the stuff that we collect. And I went ahead and added some of the field tags so we can actually log the keystrokes instead of just logging the key name. So because that's how the the library that we're using for this uh, interprets the key when you say um let's see like somewhere here mm, that's not in there where do I have that thing okay so right here when you say get a key text and you pass over the key code it is basically going to get the test as it is. So if you pass on, let's say, forge, it's going to get the key code for forge, and it's going to get the test as code instead of the character code. That's how the, um, the library works. So what I went ahead and do, did for uh, after last week's streaming. I went ahead and added this if else statement so that we can filter and actually add the character that we want and not uh, the key code test translation. So that's what I did here. So basically, I'm looking at the key code for shift, caps lock, all speed, control key. Windows key, I'm not doing the login on Windows, I'm on Windows, but if you have a Linux machine, that's different, but I don't think, um, what I don't know is, I don't think any, what I don't know like uh, how Linux hardware works, like, apart from the software, I don't know if there's a, a keyboard that has a Linux key on it. But this is basically for Windows, so let's say if you the dead accused key, I don't know what that is, but that is in this library, so I just added the field tag here so we don't have to log some of that stuff. So each time we see any of this keys, we just return force. We're not going to log that. And but if we see enter, we log in a new line. If we see space, we just log the current space of the space character. Then when we get a backspace, this uh, backspace method handles that. So basically how that method works is it goes straight to the path where we have the log that we, that we have collected. And I'm going to go ahead and read that log file into the string Yoda. So we're going to read as long as we find a text in it. We read it into the uh, string Yoda. Once we're done, we make sure that the length of the string, which is the data that we collected from the file, is actually greater than 1. If that's so, we go ahead and take a substring of the whole data that we collected as string. So this substring is going to get the length of the 
also the training data has been able to subtract two from it, then take the the substring from zero to that new uh, length. So once it knows that, we get a new <coughs> we get a new sub for that. So we set that to beta. Once we do that, we go ahead and close the scanner and we write that back to file. Now, in the case that we that we don't have any log collected yet, we just set the data to anything else to write that to file. So that's basically how the backspace is going to work for now. Oh, so we can go ahead and add uh, all the filters for all the keys that we don't like want to log. Something like the L5E, the F, basically the function keys, if we don't want to log them, or the inside keys. So if we don't want to log them, we can just filter them out right away by adding more all statements. So that will be the log function for this logging class. And I changed up that a little bit here for the right. I added a boolean, so we did that overwrite the new. Um, the old log, or we just just updated like I came to it. So that is that for that. Then we just have the key logger class which implements the interface. And this is the key lesson. So this key lesson is basically going to be lesson for events when a key is uh, is pressed. And this key logger uses the logger class or the logger object to log. Um, so like the keys. So what we're doing here, we're going to create a, a logger object right here. I'm going to pass into the path. So in this case, I'm passing in my the user public, then I'm passing in one of the text. Now, this if this doesn't exist, we're going to create that. If it exists, then we're going to put it in right away. So, <coughs> so basically right here, is real real. We're just listening for the release key event. We can we can hand like we can do the same thing in the key press event or the TCP path event. So I just decided to do it in here. So with that we do just a driver. So this is like a test, but it's not the general event test. So this is a driver for the whole logic that we have in the key logger and the logger class. So right here we call the global the screen registrability book. That's from the library that we have. And once we make that call, we check for exceptions. If we don't get any exception, we then add our key logger to listen for the key event. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this so we can test it out. So basically, the thing is running right now. Now we can go in here, open the Word document, and just type whatever. Whatever. So, since we have some success, then we had to fail. To fail, we basically want to have push, I don't know, enter or something else, or say the key. So let's go to the directory and check. It should be in oh let's let's go to the C drive. Can we go to users? Can we go to public? So it's right here. And what we see here Okay, so we don't really have a thing that I'm gonna delete this thing. I'm gonna try it out one more time before that I stop this. I'm gonna go ahead and try one more time with that. Save that, close it. Then we're gonna set the program again. And we type, I'm gonna do enter. Then I'm going to add whatever. Then we're going to go ahead and check the log. So we 
see that that, that was logged correctly. Okay, so we're gonna keep typing. I'm gonna do space, whatever my mom says. Alright, we go back to text. So let's see that we're logging everything perfectly. Uh, nothing. Um, so the blue is coming in here, so we have everything the way we had it. So let's now make sure that the backspace is easy there. So let's see if I backspace. Oh, that's where I put it the wrong thing, but backspace that. And let's see what we have now. <laughs> so, yeah, whatever my mom says, back S. So something, the backspace doesn't work that well. So let's try again. So we took away. So we took away S and K. So I'm going to go to right here. So it seems like. The substring goes from. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. The substring when you take the substring, it goes from the start to one minus the end. So we're going to just subtract one instead of two. And we're going to go ahead and try that one more time. So let's check the state currently. So we have one there, so we're going to subtract one backspace um, one time. And let's see. So we did backspace one. And one backspace two times. One, two. Now the problem is when we read that, so it did backspace. So the problem is right here. <clears throat> when we read this back in from the file, I think it removes the space characters. So we need to fix that so we preserve like the structure of the whole thing. Hmm, let me see. Let's just do something here. So, for some reason, when we scan, we're going to the backspace, uh, the space characters that are being ignored. So, let's check the scan class and see. I don't really know completely how that works, so let's go ahead and check it. So I'm gonna read the scan class and see how it works when we say like next the next or anything. So okay, so this is message white space by default. Okay, I see. <coughs> Excuse me. So white spaces are like the 
he does not need the white suit. He uses the white suit to eliminate the um but he uses white space to strip it the wars that he was creating. So he's going to fix that by the following a pen um the mesh cha or the mesh what that we read from the um, from the scanner, we basically append a white space for that. So that way, we are preserving the structure of, of the whole thing. So we're going to append a white space before we append whatever we get from the scanner. So this is what we're going to keep the structure to whatever space my mom space says. So, I think that should be fine now, so let's go ahead and start over, so I all delete, save it, and go down, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to kill the other two. Alright, so let's go ahead and start the logger, or the key logger one more time, and that is running, we are going to do the same thing, whatever. My mom says, okay, we made a couple of errors, so I just have to make sure everything works out fine. So we go back, we go to, okay, so everything works out fine. Now we can go ahead and try the backspace says, so we go back and says. So it seems Correct now, so everything works fine now, so we can backspace and everything is fine. But let's do enter and see. Now I can try enter. How are you doing today? I don't think, okay, so it failed on. Um, so I'm confused to see. So let's see what the printing is. Okay. All right. So we have that there. So that was fine, except that we didn't we did not write the question mark, which is okay. Because if we want to do, if we want to log the question mark, then we have to add an if statement right here to capture that. So, and that kind of caption might be a little bit complex because it has to be combined with um, shift and the shift and the backslash key. So if we're going to uh, log the two, then we may want to listen for key press event instead of key release. <coughs> so, um, so let's see. So how are we how are we gonna do that is this we can basically save the key um I do not accept the so let's see here private so let's just save key codes that is being pressed and we can use that to like um basically implement two keys being pressed at the same time, or two keys being pressed at the same time. So we can call this previous key, and we can call the next one, uh, showing current key. So this is only for two key combinations, so we really, um, we can try to do for multiple keys, but that will require some thinking. <coughs> so, what we're going to do here is this. So, we're going to do right up here, we're just going to say current key. Mm. 
So now we need to save the previous and current key now. Once that is done, we are going to go ahead and add an out if statement.
sometimes you should think now because if the previous C is a shift, the next E um the shift is not equal to so So this could be a whole like um, because once the first once this is satisfied and the train E is not a shift, so you just have to go ahead and make a check on which E that is. Then if the key is the alphabet key, then you just make it uh, make them alpha keys. But if we're going to make an if we're going to make an uppercase, we we'll just have to check that the caps lock has been pressed before that, or the caps caps lock was not pressed before that. So that could add a couple of complexity in it. But just to just to simplify the whole thing, I'm just going to add one uh, one check for the character the question mark. So we're just going to log the question mark in this um, space. So basically, if you want to log more stuff <coughs> that has to do with key combinations like alt, um, alt shift, uh, control, then you have to like make a bunch of uh, keys that is going to like keep track of which one is being pressed. So this instead of having just um, previous and current, it is you have a, like a entity key event for out, entity key event for um, um, what do you call it? For control, entity key event for shift for caps lock, and actually it wouldn't be an entity key event though. It's just going to be a toggle, like a boolean that you're going to be turning on and off. So when the key is pressed and if the key is um, if the key is caps lock, you toggle caps lock. Um, so the cast log boolean variable to true after the key, but you have to be listening for that in only the key press event. So you're going to basically have a way of listening, logging. Um, so in that case, you're going to be logging your uh, key combination events in the TCP press event and other like key release you can just use that as well as the key event. So that is you're going to have like one of the five the log of the class like have a log a log function for multiple keys um press like key combination. But right now I'm adding that functionality as an if statement down here, just using the previous and uh, and the current key. But this is only going to work. I'm just going to put a, a check in just for the um, question mark key. And so let me go ahead and do that. So I'm going to do if current key. Uh, then again, key code, key code equal. Or maybe I should just add uh, boolean since I'm just testing for one. I should just check it right here. So, we're going to start this on a new line. Then I started doing shift. I'm um, going to do that and have the average um, backslash S D D K underscore back. Yeah, backslash. So 
for that one. Uh, this one. Okay. I guess it should, should be slash then. So we use that one. So when we do that, then we can go ahead and instead of loading, um, we can go ahead and just do uh, go ahead and do that. So we're going to change, update the previous speed first, so we're going to do the speed, we're going to update the current speed, then we can go ahead and write, so we return, um, alright, then in this case is special max, because it is the ship coming in and going to the device. And what is the problem? Okay. In this case, we're going to say all. So we're going to append instead of um, is it true? False is to override. So we just do append. So maybe that's the um, boolean. I should do is append. Override is not the right one. So we say true to append to the log, and we can say false to override. So that this way. So the previous speed is the shift, and the current speed is um, backslash, then we go ahead and do that. And then it is in, okay, so then it is in your know, stuff that is going to conflict with that. So right now we can go ahead and log the question mark. So this way we can add more stuff like this to. Like, if you want to log um, the greater than sign, the less than sign, <coughs> you just need to change this to greater than, less than, and other stuff. So, but for now, we're just going to log the question mark, and that's about it. And let's see what, how much we've logged so far. So, yeah, a bunch of crap. So we're going to start the program, and then we're going to erase all that. Uh, as you can see, how there's still a lot to filter, like the up, down arrow, if you really want to make this like that plain. <coughs> so. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and start the program one more time. I'm going to write down the same thing again. Whatever my uh, whatever my mom says. Then how are you? It did say fail, so let's check. Alright, so it doesn't seem like it logged that. 
fulfilled. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what we gonna do? Let me put um breakpoint. I mean, just is that a breakpoint? Following breakpoint. <clears throat> um, let me try it. Mm, still terminal. Oh. I'm always going to do bugs, I'm always going to say. Alright. Then we can try that again. Uh, oh, let me one second. So let's see here. If we have something so we can that. Oh yeah, we do. So it fills out the shift key. Now we need to take that off because we want to capture that.
Alright, so we're gonna stop that. I'm gonna go just clear the log. I'm gonna save it. Then I will try to run outside the program one more time. And we try to find how Oh, uh, you. Alright, so we still got fail. Um, oh, yeah, I went out here again. Uh, okay. So, I'm not sure what's going on here. <coughs> The stuff is not working. It's basically not this one. It's not anything keeping. So this one is false each time. So. So I'm going to create the first T, which is shift. This is true, then we will go down to this path. We need to reset shift to something else. Well, we're going to set that shift actually. Then I'll make the next push. Well, will be the slash. Or maybe it's some of the slash, maybe the backslash. Um, let's try that. <coughs> um, maybe I should just copy the whole thing. So, please. Any of those or this one. And we do add a slash on this. The slash should have worked, but I don't know why it didn't work. <coughs> so let's see. Maybe, maybe I should just do this. So let's uh, stop the program. And we play the log. Then we set the program back on. I'm just going to try to log this. this. Alright, something failed. Now we set it all fine again the second time. This one. So. So nothing was logged. And the previous key. Okay. Eh. Um So let's let me save uh what are we going to do here? So, how about we start the previous key as previous key? I'm going to set it to E4. Um, Uh, 
So my name is Class and that's six segments. So zero 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 and then five and nothing. No, really stop. So, so that is ten is not null, I guess. So let's go ahead and try that again. And do question mark. So so again. Okay, we need to play the wrong. Um, so let's set the program back on. And let's see here. So go ahead and try the same question now. So it did so one more time. Yeah, it really shipped. And when we push the the question mark and it failed. So why did it fail? Uh, let's see. So I am going to let it just not log the shift speed. So uh, let's not log it. That is, let's not write the shift speed uh, text file. So uh, we're just going to, if that is shift, we just, I think I should, uh, the blue is, yeah. Um, well, okay, let's do green. Green. Green key dot equals. Shift. So, if, if that's true, we just return. So, we return true. So we, we cannot log the shift speed. Because the only reason we get the shift speed is so that we can get in here. Okay. Excuse me. Maybe we should do another debug and see. Uh, let's do a debug so we see what happens there. And we'll play the log. So let's run in debug mode. Um, do um, we want something this, this kind of one to come to the different pieces. Blah, blah, okay. Here. Okay. So we have that one in R. So in that line, so the E is T29, and then we get an R. So let's set. Set both of that. Can we check? It's not really displaying all the variables, but okay. So, what is the variable though? Okay, this array is. So, yeah, I mean, previous is. 29. Actually, 
Rose, Jane, Jane, Phil. Tessa. Oh, yeah, they're all the same key now. So, we're in 17. Hmm. This is interesting, so. Scissor ship. Ship is 50. Um. Yeah, he's what ship is 50. That's not what I want to do that. The previous is 50. Hmm. Let's settle. Um. Uh, I'm pretty sad when it's annoying. Let's set up with the debugging, so we run that. Let's put ship that. Okay. So we can start with 28. 22 is 29. The previous C is 23. And made out of them is the same. So, okay, nothing in the eat. Yeah. Huh. Maybe, maybe. So, I think this is the problem, right? Yeah. The problem is maybe we will log in the we will log in uh twenty two because that would be twenty so I think this, uh, the way we're trying to save the previous and the current key is actually not, not good, I would say. So, uh, we're going to change that instead. So instead of changing uh, logging in here, we are going to actually do that somewhere else. Um, so if this is equal to shift, what we want to do is we want to return true. But also, we can show up with a couple of examples anyway. Uh, then let's do previous. Previous equals uh, previous key. Equals 23. Mm. So, I think this should fix it. So, when we change this, if there was a shift key, when we come in here, 
Thank you.